This short video will give you an introduction into the Easy Rule Creator, a tool which has been developed to help security experts like yourselves to create high quality snort rules. Once you have written your rule, you can check for syntax errors that may cause snort to fail at runtime, or the software can make recommendations based on performance issues or whether your rule has a high chance of false positive. So let's open up the application and get started. The first thing you should notice when opening the application is it is designed to be intuitive. For example, if a snort keyword has a number of different options, they'll be provided in a drop down box. This stops the need to go back to the snort manual and research what the options are for that particular category. The second thing you will notice is that the application is dynamic. So if you make any changes to any fields on the application, you will notice the rule is dynamically updated in the text box at the bottom. Thirdly, the application aims to be both intuitive and dynamic by hiding or disabling certain options that do not work together within Snort. So for example, making changes to the protocol option will only make available the keywords that you can use in Snort under that protocol. Again, as you make changes within these panels, the rule is updated in the bottom text box. If you uncheck one of these check boxes, the keyword is removed from the rule at the bottom. Anywhere on the panels you see a delete button, again you can press this and it will be deleted from the bottom text box. When we look at the TCP panel, you will notice TCP options, but also there are HTTP options. This is to protect you from using HTTP keywords when using protocols such as UDP or ICMP. So hopefully now you can see how we can build up our rule by just filling in the text boxes, putting checks in check boxes, and slowly the rule begins to build here at the bottom. If we want to add a content match, we can do so here. We can also add our offsets, depth, distance within. And also, if there's any keyword modifiers, we can add them here, such as HTTP URI, raw cookie, fast pattern, etc., etc. Just by checking the checkboxes, and the rule will be updated in the bottom box. We can also add keywords that are relative to content matches such as is data at, which is configured by checking the checkbox. Fill out the number, and if we want it to be relative to the content match, we check the relative checkbox. To add it, just click the Add button, and the is data at keyword will appear in your rule below. If you want to remove the is data at keyword, just check the box again, and click Remove, and you'll notice it disappears from the bottom text box. The same can be said of byte test. Again, check the checkbox and start to configure your keyword. Something different with byte test to the other boxes is you'll notice that until the bytes to convert the operator value and the offset are filled out, it will not update your rule. This is because byte test needs those four elements before it is a valid keyword. Again, we're trying to protect you from making those errors. Check relative to make it relative to the content match. And if need be, configure the rest of your keyword and click Add to add it to the Snort rule below. To remove byte test from your rule, it's the same as is data at. Just check the checkbox again and then click on the Remove button. And the byte test keyword will be removed from your rule. If you want to build a rule that has multiple content matches, you just need to click on the green plus buttons and a new set of options will become available. As before, this would be added to your rule in the bottom text box, and it will fit after the first content match. 
It will also sit straight after any byte tests or is data ats that are relative to the first keyword. So we can keep on adding content matches up to a total of four using the application. Now for those that are comfortable using regular expression, we have the option to add PCRE into our rule. Now when we check the PCRE checkbox, you should have noticed that a number of keyword modifiers have appeared that are relevant to PCRE. And yet again, you'll see these modifiers added to your rule in the bottom text box correctly and in the right position. If you're confident with your regular expression, then go ahead and save your rule. However, it makes sense to test your regular expression before saving. To do this, we can press the test button to open up the regex tester. This is a great way to test if your PCRE is behaving as you wish it to behave. The regular expression that you typed into your content match is automatically loaded into the top text box. In the center text box, you can add text that you wish to check your PCRE against. And in the bottom text box will be all the matches that are found and the index at which they were found within your test text. So the regex tester was designed such that it would act the same way that the snort engine would act on your PCRE rule. So if you had case sensitive matching or dot or or um, any other keyword modifiers like the X or the M, you could check the checkboxes here in the regex tester and then you would see if your PCRE match acted as you thought that it would act on the string of text in the middle box. You can also turn on normalization. Um, again, this is trying to mimic the snort engine. So if you're using the HTTP preprocessor on your snort process, you need to turn on your normalize HTTP here. So it will do a check on the text in the same way that snort would do it. And that is run it through a preprocessor first and remove all those nasty um, percent encoded, for example. To show you how this all works, what I've done, I've taken a packet capture of a cross-site script um, uh, being carried out and I've saved that to a text file and what I can do with the regex tester is import these text files into the middle text box so I can run my PCRE match against that text. I've done it first as a simple cross-site script attack um, and then what I've done I percent encoded the attack and then I've double percent encoded the attack so I've got three files which I can load up and we can see how our PCRE will act when the normalized process is turned off and turned on and the double decode is turned off and turned on. So I'll import the first file. So you can see here, this is a get request. Uh, and within the URL, one of the arguments, there is a script tag that obviously shouldn't be there. So if I just type in the top text box, um, uh, an open tag script for a simple match, you should see the same appear in the bottom text box. So you can see the result is a, a match. So if I now open uh, another file, this is the exactly same URL, but this time there's percent encoded included in that URL. So now we have no result in the bottom text box, so we haven't got a match. If we now check on the normalize HTTP checkbox, you will see that the normalization process takes place in the background, and we do have a match. So it's exactly the same as it would um, detect within Snort, but using the regex tester. So if we go through the same process again, but this time we use a file that is double encoded, we can check the double decode checkbox and a match should appear in the bottom text box. So this shows the importance of having double decode turned on in your HTTP preprocessor in Snort. Making sure you're catching cross-site scripts, even if they have been double encoded to um, evade your IPS. Once you are happy with your PCRE and you've done all the testing you wish to do with the regex tester, you click on the save button and it will save your PCRE back to your content match on your home screen. Click OK and then you can close down the regex tester and go back to your main screen. Once you are happy with the content of your rule, you may wish to add some references at the end, which you can do here. And again, there are options which you can choose, such as URL or um, bug track, 
Nessus, Arachnids, any of those short modifiers which will go against the reference. So there you have it, you've built yourself a rule. Now, the next stage in the typical Snort rule writing process would be to load up your rule into Snort and to see if it loads and see if it works. Now, obviously, with the main aim of this application is to help you to speed up the process of creating good quality, high quality rules. So included within the application is a check function. And what this is going to do is do some um, regular checking for syntax errors, um, silly mistakes that you might make um, by accident, such as uh, including double spaces. Or let's say, for example, you have a, a cross-site script attack on a server that was written in the wrong direction, so it was from the server. We check, and you can see that it picks up that it's the wrong way round for that modify. Something else that's included is a recommendation button. And this is checking for not syntax errors or something that will not load into Snort, but this is looking for errors that might be included in your rule that you have not noticed. So for example, if we were to take away the message text and then do a recommendation, it will obviously pick up that there's no message text. Now this will load into Snort, but what it's saying is that your alerts are not gonna have a message, so you have no way of identifying what the alert was for. So simple checks for those sort of things. So our rule has been built. We've checked it to make sure there's no syntax errors in there. We've run it through the recommendations to make sure that we haven't missed anything silly. And now we can go ahead and copy our rule onto a, onto Notepad and load it into Snort. Now, when it comes to working with long, complex rules, some of you may like to work with your rule written over multiple lines by just adding the uh, escape backslash. This will still load into Snort, but it does make reading the rule a lot easier. So we've included the checkbox at the bottom. And what this does is add the backslash and the new line to your rule, which makes things a lot easier to read. So you can again copy that and paste that into your notepad uh, and load that into Snort without a problem. Now, one thing you may wish to do is to save your rule um, so you can come back to it at a later date or as a, a template. So you may wish to build templates and save them and then you can just open them and start building on top of the template. So if you go up to the file menu in the top left hand corner, you can save your rule. Um, just give your rule a name and click on the save button. And that's it. It's saved to file. So now you can reset your form if you wish, so clear all the fields. And you can carry on, either write a completely new rule from fresh, or you can open up the old template that you'd saved before and start to build upon that template or upon that rule. And that's it. That pretty much concludes this um, introduction to the Easy Rule Creator Snort from iDAPCOM. I hope you enjoyed watching the video, and I do hope that you enjoy using the tool and writing some really complex and interesting rules. We have been my .com.